Thanks, wow. You know, I always wanted to perform on stage. It's a gorgeous theater. Um, uh, I'm Praveen, I'm CEO of AppSheet. Um, I was supposed to be here this morning. Um, actually, I was here in Birmingham last year, uh, roughly around this time, because I came out to visit EBSCO, um, who had started to use AppSheet to build applications within the company. And I got to meet Matt, who you may have seen this morning. Um, and so when they said this year we're doing Sloss Tech and do you want to come participate? I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Then I heard who your keynote speaker was going to be. So I decided, okay, I'm not going to shave all week and uh, try to fit in a little bit, just a little bit. Didn't practice my tennis, but yeah. Um, but then, um, uh, you know, the topic was supposed to be rapid delivery of applications. Um, but I learned in the last 24 hours that um, American Airlines is not into the rapid delivery of people. <laughs> so I was stuck in Savannah, couldn't get here. Um, but the amazing thing is uh, the folks here at Slastec were really good at the rapid, you know, readjustment of the schedule. And Matt did a rapid creation of an application and rapid replacement of me in the morning panel. And um, anyway, we would rapidly throw some slides together. Um, so that's what we got. In fact, my goal was to live build a, an app, but just sort of the mechanics uh, prevent that. So we're doing it sort of the PowerPoint version of that, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so in a grandiose fashion, I labeled it the quest for a self-driving app platform. Um, just sort of setting the stage for this, this is what we think it takes to build an application. Uh, somebody comes up with an idea, right? And uh, they have got to go write this up in some kind of specification. What's missing there is you usually have to convince all kinds of people in management to hand out budget for it, and people fight about that for weeks. Um, finally, it gets approved. There's some development team that has to be found, hired. Um, developers are these strange unicorn beasts. Um, they, there's a claim that there's 20 million developers in the world, we'll come back to that. Um, but then those developers take a long time and produce this thing which is arcane code, which runs something, which was sort of the application the original idea was intended to be, and then you iterate on that. Maybe once in six months you get a new version of this thing. Eventually you may get something you want. And that costs, you know, if you're doing this in a company, it would cost 100,000, 200,000 bucks to build. Um, so a high failure rate. That's sort of the state of the art. Um, so consider this. What if we didn't have those steps in the middle? What if you could go from the idea to the application almost instantly? So there's somehow this platform that understands the intent of what you intended and could produce something that was close to that and you can iterate on it really fast. In fact, most of the time, you don't really know exactly what you want. Like this morning they said, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have an application for the secret stages schedule? Because let's not keep it so secret, right? Let's actually tell people what's, who's performing where and put in an app, right? So, um, but you don't know exactly what you want in it. You can't write the spec for it. It would be nice to iterate on that. Can you do that instantly? So that's a concept. And this concept, um, when we started doing this, didn't have a name. It was this, Praveen, what's this crazy thing you're talking about? That was the name. And uh, now there's a term for this. Things like this are called no code platforms. Which code uh, is a four letter word, you want to avoid it, you say no code. Um, so uh, a no code platform in theory um, allows you to express your intent and applications automation software gets built from it. So um, this is where I would jump into doing a demo. Let me jump across and make sure my shadow's not on the screen. Um, but instead of doing a live demo, we'll do a demo um, through a sequence of slides. Um, our initial insight was that a lot of the intent of what you want to build is probably in some data set that you have because human beings represent their concepts in data. Right? Um, as it turns out, the secret stages folks had a spreadsheet and it had a spreadsheet of all of the deep, different people who are going to be performing at different venues. And you see the spreadsheet up here, it's got various titles, I'm not sure you can quite see it. But um, right at the bottom, hidden behind this last symbol, <laughs> is a tab which says, this is the lineup. There are different artists performing at different times. 
with the description, a photo of the artist, and so on. And there's another tab that's got different venues. So each artist is at a venue at a certain time. The venue's got an address. Okay, it's just a spreadsheet. Um, and this happens to be in a Google Sheet, and I'm showing you up there one way you can build an application. App Sheet is this product that builds an application from a spreadsheet. It's got a single button saying go over on the right, so we press go. <laughs> um, and it takes you to App Sheet, asks you to sign in, and it automatically builds an app. And it throws a bunch of things into it, making its best guess at what you were trying to do. Huh, it looks like there's some uh, some events in there. So why don't we throw them together? They've got photographs. Why don't we present it in a nice friendly fashion? That's the one on the left. Mm, it looks like you've got venues. Why don't we add those in? It looks like those venues are related to the events. Let's tie them together so you can look at a venue. The Saturn, is that like a, a club or something? And um, here, I need to visit more often. <laughs> and those are the artists playing at, those event, at, at that place. And then you've got a map as well because they have addresses and you, you can map it out so you can actually get there. So, so you sort of start out here and you get here in a couple of minutes. Now, is there anything magical in this? Well, on one hand you may say, oh, it's magical, this I think actually works and it'll run on an iPhone, run on an Android, run on the web. Yeah, all that's true. Um, but on the other hand, think about it. A computer can beat the world chess champion. Okay? You can throw a computer at this thing called Go, which is this crazy complicated game. It can beat everybody in the world. It shouldn't be this wildly complicated thing to figure out from that data that this is what you wanted to see or something close to it. That's what we do. So you start out here. And you know the same thing runs on different form factors. You don't have to start laying things out on the screen for a tablet, for a phone, and so on. You should be smart enough to know, yeah, you know, you put it on a tablet, show more stuff, show it a little larger, and so on. But then what you're actually doing is, yes, that app's being generated, but you work with a, an editing surface, a design surface, which lays out your data. It's all really about your data, and you, know, you have venues, and you have lineups, and those things are shown in a map, and so on. And that's the sort of a surface you play with, and there's lots and lots of things you can add to it in richness to translate the ideas you have in your head into things in the app. But you're never writing, you're never saying, uh, open curly brace and write some code in there, right? Um, you never do that. You're defining just your intent at a very high level. Um, just to sort of play with it, you know, uh, I had, I started to build these slides out with about 20 minutes um, at Charlotte Airport because that's kind of when we decided, okay, we're gonna, I'm actually gonna make it here by 2.30. <laughs> so, um, oh, did I tell you American Airlines canceled my flight again today? Yeah, um, but anyway, so, um, I love American Airlines. Um, so I sort of quickly went in and said, oh, there's dates, let's add a calendar view. Let's go find the logo for secret stages to make it look nice. Um, and that's about it. And then you mark the app as public and you get a link and you can just sort of send that link out to people and say, hey, install this on your phone, install this in the browser. I'm not quite sure where the links are. Oh, they're off to the right? <laughs> Blame that on PowerPoint, actually. Um, so we'll have to actually turn, I, I'm not sure if um, somebody can post this, somebody's gonna post those links on, on Twitter or something, but you might wanna just install the app on your phone and give it a try. This is the simplest kind of app. There's actually nothing much to it. It's presenting the data that was in the spreadsheet. All right, uh, it just presents it in a mobile friend, in a sort of app friendly way so you can actually work with it. Matt this morning built uh, a slightly different version of this that also let you choose favorites and you can build richer and richer things. Um, at the end of the day, app sheet's not really actually about building apps for events, right? Um, you got websites, apps for events are pretty easy. Um, hell yeah, that's sort of finished version, looks good. But start to finish about five to 10 minutes, all right? So in, um, let me do the math. I was sitting in Savannah Airport for six hours and six, so that would have been about 36 apps I could have built in that period of time. And each app costs about, uh, what did I say, about 100,000 bucks, and it's what it takes to, cost, to build an app? Okay, um, 3.6 million, something like that. Um, interesting question is, what I showed you right now is actually just a sort of a, um, I described this to somebody recently. Um, do you guys remember when Netflix would mail DVDs, <laughs> right? So 
It used to be you had to go to the theater. Then it used to be that there's Blockbuster and Netflix. And I'm just reflecting my age. Um, but Netflix would mail DVDs. It's better, nice, but there's still some friction, right? You had to wait a day for it to show up. I showed you building an app in five to 10 minutes. That's just the stage of Netflix shipping DVDs by analogy, right? What's coming at some point soon is that you should just be able to describe your app in English, what you wanted to do, right? If you can describe what you wanted to do, that's where the value is. The value of apps, automations, and so on is the idea is it's not in the translation of it into grungy code. In fact, you do not want to be writing code again and again. It's just, you know, every 20 lines of code has a bug in it. Do you guys know this rule of thumb? Uh, any developers in the audience? Software engineers? Good, there are none. Oh, just a couple. <laughs> I got the right audience. This talk is for you. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, we'll come back to this, to this, this particular topic because uh, did I mention that software engineers are like this mythical unicorn beast? There may be one or two hiding in the crowd, but that's about it. So, uh, like I was saying, AppSheet is not primarily for consumer-facing apps, event schedules, that sort of thing. What we've discovered is those things are sort of dime a dozen, but actually there's a lot of folks in businesses who want to use applications to automate things. Um, anything that drives productivity in a business tends to be um, uh, something that can actually benefit. Um, there's a lot of folks, it's amazing, in our personal lives we use these consumer apps that are really powerful, really elegant, um, but at work, we sort of accustomed to work sucks, work is inefficient, work processes are terrible, I'm copying stuff on from paper to, you know, that sort of work life, and we're trying to sort of change that. Um, so that's kind of where, from a practical, you know, if I think as a startup founder, uh, where's your business, who are the customers, what are their needs, that's where this technology is currently gaining a lot of traction. Um, especially, in situations where people can't be tied to a laptop or desktop, where they're deskless workers out in the field, um, that sort of stuff. Um, it's actually sort of in this context that we got started talking with EBSCO, as I mentioned, um, because uh, they have a variety of different businesses doing stuff in factory floor and warehouses and stuff like that. Um, but also, um, oh, it brings me back to Savannah and my Unfortunate time there, but I was in Savannah because uh, we were talking to a company called Parkers, and they run a bunch of convenience stores. It was really interesting. Uh, this was just two days ago, yesterday. I spoke with the, um, they have a chief innovation officer, um, and Eric, and he said, Parkers is a technology company that happens to be in the business of doing convenience stores. And so I thought it was a wonderful explanation. I mean, we've all heard about software eating the world, but this is really about every company is a technology company. And then he said to me this interesting thing. He said, we're really excited about AppSheet because you know, we're not in Silicon Valley. We're not sort of washing a lot of software engineers. I said, hang on a second. Why do you want all those software engineers? <laughs> um, you're a wash of people who have ideas about how to make Parkers better. Right? And what you really need to do is take those ideas and translate them into software. Now, the problem has been that translating into software has been this ultra high friction thing. It's insanity that it's so high friction. And that's what we're trying to remove. And if you can get past that, then, um, you know, whether it's Birmingham, whether it's Savannah, wherever else, the world's full of smart people with smart ideas. Right? And we're not sort of restricted by the, uh, the software engineer unicorns that we've got to find and track and pay huge sums of money to. Um, this is my one sort of uh, complex slide, so, uh, uh, you know, humor me, please. Um, the vertical axis is, this is sort of trying to show the space and opportunity uh, that sits in front of us for um, the next 15, 20 years. I mean, I say it sits in front of us, it sits in front of uh, folks using computing power to automate things in their lives. The vertical axis is who can make an application. And don't think of an app as something running on your phone. It's anything that's automated using software. The who, all right? And that's a log scale. The, at the bottom are developers. Very generously, there's estimates that there's 20 million developers in the world. Um, truth is, there's about one million who are good. 
I, hey, anybody tried hiring developers? It's almost impossible, okay? So uh, there's about one million who are good, 20 million who can dabble. And then there's about a billion people who, uh, <laughs> there's about a billion people who are, I'd say, business users. They use PowerPoint, Excel, um, Word, right? Um, there's about actually, I said, the slide said six billion, there's actually seven billion more people in the world. The world population crossed eight billion last year, or last month. All right, so that's people. And on this axis is, what are you trying to build? On the far left, really simple things, like a web page. Simple web page, Facebook page. Um, you know, a while ago that was a complicated thing to do, but now it's an easy thing to do. Over on the right is a virtual reality simulator for a Mars rover that is going to be launched to Saturn. <laughs> right? Something insanely complicated over on the right. Um, and anything can be built with code. That's what the, the orange line is. If you're writing code, <laughs> you can write anything, but only those, uh, those unicorns can write it over on the right. Very few people. There are these bunch of platforms that now claim they're low code. In other words, they're frameworks to make it a little easier for developers to do stuff. It's the same developers, but let's get them to do their stuff a little faster. Um, so they coined the phrase low code. In fact, you have to write less to get the same stuff done. You still have to write code, but less. All right? Um, and then what's happened is there's this whole bandwagon now. Everybody who's got anything labels themselves as low code because who wants to be high code or low code? But this no code thing is the other line, the, that sort of curvy line, uh, which really says, hey, allow business users to build stuff. And if it's not supported through so something like AppSheet, if you cannot express it in AppSheet, you're done. You don't go write code. There's no hooks to go write scripts and do other stuff. You can't. Uh, but we keep dragging that line to the right. So I just showed you a really trivial thing. But people write a rich, they define their security, they do machine learning, they do workflows, they do reporting, they do analytics, um, they do a lot of data capture, forms, capturing video, GPS locations, logic, lots of stuff. And all that's grown over time and it keeps growing to the right. And the very interesting thing is, it also, that line also keeps going upward, which means it gets more intuitive for people to do the same thing. So if they had to express it one year, the next year some of it is deduced by the system. It gets smarter over time, and it gets smarter because more people use it. So uh, that's sort of the general direction in this space is that the line's gonna keep getting drawn further and further and further to the right and higher. Which means more people in the world can translate their ideas into automations, and doing so will become faster, more intuitive, easier, and so on. Make sense? So, yeah, so back to sort of the grandiose claim, the overall goal is to achieve the equivalent of just like a self-driving car to get to a self-driving app platform. In a self-driving car, you don't, need a, you, need, you don't need a person to drive it. You just have to indicate where you want to go. The car takes you there, navigating through all the details it has to navigate through. And you want to achieve this, we're trying to achieve, envision something similar. Describe the end result, where you want to get to, with your software, with your automations, and the platform takes you there. No driver required, no data scientist required, no, so, no designer required. So you want to eliminate that, and all you really should need is the idea. I think that's that.